All right, let's just jump into it. Um, before before I get started, because like this is um, this is going to be uploaded to the channel. Uh, I'm extending my uh, my masters, uh, like my uh, fifty percent off masters deal that I was doing last week. I'm going to be carrying that on into this week. So seven days starting from today, I'm going to be doing some more masters. Yeah, nice one. All right, sweet Joe. Cheers. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be extending my masters. I've just got some new some new speakers, some master and grade speakers. They're pretty huge. That's what uh, the the camera's on now. Um, like some ATCs. So really gassed to get those. Um, so yeah, if you want want the masters done and then from someone that's got, got an acoustically treated room and uh, some proper speakers that can hear right down to 20 hertz, then uh, get your boy up. <laughs> um, cool. So I got started. I got started to work on this um, DMB track today because I didn't really want to jump straight into starting something from scratch, just in case if I was faffing about. And um, you know, because I, I don't really make DMB all that much, um, so I've got this rough idea here, which is basically just drums and a bit of an intro and you know, like a, a little pitch drop thing. I'll go through all of these um, before we get started as well, just so that you guys are up to scratch, you know, up to speed with like the project and that. Oh my god, everything's playing. Turn this off. So yeah, you guys get the gist. Um, basically, just some drums. We're going to fill this in with some basses and that. I'm just going to go through some of the drum processing that I've done, and I need to just try and find that little glitch vocal thing that I had, and that just came about in the drums there. Um, is the right, guys? Um, so what, what what have I done so far? I need to remind myself. Um, so I'm using XO here as my um, basically like my drum machine. I've, I've showed you guys this before in the last stream as well. Um, for those of you that don't know, basically this is a drum a drum sequencer and drum machine. But it has a really cool way of like organizing all your samples. So all these little dots here are my sample packs and they're all just organized in frequency. So like, you know, longer samples at the bottom, shorter samples at the top, and then deeper samples you know, like low end stuff on the far left and then high end stuff on the far right. So like, you know, a lot of kicks and then shake is this end and then some top perks, some snares, and then it's just some like random uh, longer stuff at the bottom. So I've just got some, uh, some kicks lined up here. It sounds a bit thin because that's the intro stuff. If I go into this one here, then these ones sound a little bit thicker. So yeah, I've just got some uh, kicks in these ones, and I've got some snares in the other ones. And um, I've just got two variations. I'm not using them in, right now, but I could do. The option's there. Two different types of kicks. Um, I'm just running those through this SSL channel. Uh, I'm not actually doing anything with it, but I just use it for like the gain and driving of down You know, in this little white knob there. That's the base, basically like you're driving the input or output. You can kind of do the same with the fader here, but uh, that's just there on all my channels as default, and then it's got some cool, um, some cool filters here, which are just nice and handy to automate up and down. 
uh, you know, like t uh, top of, you know, was it low pass and high pass filters, um, reminiscent of like a, uh, you know, the, the ob obviously an SSL desk, an old analog mixing desk. And I've just got some like dynamic EQ going in on the, on the kick. Let me just uh, solo these. If I turn this off, you can hear it's like awfully distorted. If <laughs> I turn, turn all these off and turn it back on. So all I'm, all I'm doing is, um, is just suppressing some resonances and giving the low end a little bit of an oomph whilst also um, just rounding off anything at like 50 hertz with like a 18 dB roll off. I'd probably go a bit tighter normally, but you know, um, it doesn't really matter. It's just sort of like rounding off the lows to have space for the sub, giving the, uh, the fundamental like a bit of a, bit of a push. And then I'm just sort of suppressing these. I don't know if you can hear that, but just some pokey frequencies that are in the kick. Um, and then you know when the kicks comes in, um, when those frequencies are hitting, it's uh, docking those down. And then I've just got a safety net um, of this uh, side sideband EQ, which is just basically you know if the, I don't think there are any because it's a kick sample. I can double check, but it's, it, I just do it by default. I just roll off anything up to about between 120 and 100 and 200 hertz just to sort of make sure that everything's real nice and mono compatible, you know, and anything on the sides is removed, just to, you know, make sure that everything's like nice and tight down there. Um, so that's, that's the kick processing. Basically, what I've done there as well is I've uh, reduced the output by 7 dB so that it can run into my analog emulation preamps and stuff. Uh, this, it's not really doing anything, but because it's running into it so hot, it's given it a different flavor. That it's very minor the differences. So um, I've gone through this plugin before in the last stream as well, and then um, I'm just clipping it. So basically, think of this kind of like a compressor. Um, a clipper is like um, no, how's the best way to describe this? Basically, you c it pushes. The best thing to do is actually just show you guys how this works. I don't know if I showed you this in the last stream, but this is a new plugin that I've been playing about with, and I'm loving it. It basically allows you to get uh, things as close to zero as possible without destroying uh, the audio. And it's great for electronic music because clipping, I mean, get, getting things as close to zero means that you're, um, you're not worrying too much about uh, peaks. Um, so you can push things into it as hard as you can and just use your volume fader over here as um, basically just like a way of positioning it in the track. It makes mixing a little bit easier. Uh, this is a really cheap plugin as well. It's only like thirty quid, I think. So it's worth, worth de definitely worth getting. Um, so yeah, let me show you how this works. So with this link knob, uh, you can see that the in and output stage is linked. So when I'm driving into it, it's lowering the output by an equal amount, so I can judge whether if the sound is getting broken down or. Uh, whether if it's actually being pushed loud, loudly in a, in a nice way. And I'll show you how that works now. Right. So now, now we're starting to crush the sound, but I'll push it really hard so you guys can really hear it. So that's totally destroyed now. But if we dial that back... I think that's about as far as we can push it. Then I can unlink them. You can see here uh, in the waveform thing. Maybe that's a bit too hard. But like now, I know that that's hitting zero, um, or or as close to zero as I can get it. Um, and now that's uh, you know pushing real loud, real nice. Like, you know I can. You know, put that wherever I want now, and now that I know that that's hitting. So I'll always put the K-clip at the end of the chain. You don't want to do it before any processing or after any processing. If you've got any analog emulation stuff, you definitely don't want to be putting this afterwards because it'll just sound awful. Like if I throw this on the end here, it'll just sound shit. Or not. 
a little bit of clipping there. Yeah, so it's sort of like crushing the high end. It's you know, you, I'm going into it way too hot. You can see the VUs are just freaking out there. Whereas if I put it here, the VUs are sitting like nicely below their distor you know, their distortion point. And um, yeah, it's just something to keep in mind when you're playing with loudness and stuff. You have got to be careful with your levels and that. So as um. I've got a really thin, <laughs> weak snare here. Um, definitely needs a layer. Um, it could, you know, it could be my headphones. I, I, I really don't trust these, but I've got this like weird little delay thing. Um, I might actually take that out and add my own delay afterwards. Uh, a little fade on the end there. Oh, I might. Give this a little bit of a shape up as well. Cool, and then we definitely need a lower end sound. You know, what, actually, what I might do is add a um. Add an acoustic snare underneath, and then beds are out tonight. Uh... Oh. No, I, I hate the sound of that already. Sick. Um, let's not bother with that then. Maybe make this wider. Try a different sound and layer it with something else in XO. Because I'm an awful, <laughs> awful layerer. I'd rather um, find samples that fit to fit together nicely, and then um, yeah, I can try that. Um, yeah, so w what's different about DMB that I've found compared to dubstep is that it's really, really sweaty. And what I mean by that, for those of you, for those of you guys that don't know what sweaty means, <laughs> is um, it is nerdy and it uh, requires a lot of effort to get things sounding right. And it's all about the little details. If we listen to you listen to Mr. Sesco over here. You know, there's not a lot going on in this track, but what is going on is very specific and, uh, you know, it has um, a certain quality to it that, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of us producers really struggle to, to hit, you know, to sort of use it on every track. It's normally running up on my second screen, but you guys are on my second screen right now. Don't have to, and also you guys are going to want to see what I'm looking at when I'm referencing this. And then um, I just put an EQ on the master as well, just to sort of, um, you know, see where things are sitting. Because like this isn't the most detailed spectrum. I can probably get rid of this, to be fair, if I'm just having a look at the EQ here and the spectrogram to get a bit more detail out of it. And for those of you that don't know what a spectrogram is, it's basically um, an analysis, you know, a spectrum analyzer that you see on an EQ, but based on time. So it's, um, you know, you've got, you know, your low frequencies down at the bottom, your high frequencies at the top, and then the colors represent how loud things are. So, um, you know, white obviously being the loudest, uh, you know, which you can see down here, the sub being, you know, a, a bright purple, pinky, white thing. <laughs> and, um, then it descends descends all the way through to red, uh, like oranges and reds, um, through the color spectrum to uh, until it hits zero, where you can't see any space at all. And it's just good to you know see where things are sitting in in the mix, and then like how things decay over time when you're analyzing tracks and stuff like that. Uh, sound field stereo meter. So basically, this is just checking my phase. So this correlation meter, this green bar, if this goes down, 
then it's not in phase. If it's all up at the one, then it is in phase. And um, it's not, you know, you, sh you shouldn't always look at this as like a rule to live by and like try and keep things always in phase because it's good to have. Um, you know, certain things obviously have to be in phase, but then it's also good to throw things out there and keep it wide and, you know, maybe make it a bit too wide for the headphone listeners out there that want something that's super crazy wide and stuff. And then obviously just basic levels and loudness, meters. So. So what I'm noticing straight away is uh, snares are quite high in this genre. Uh, this like deep, minimal d &B. So what I might do is group these, throw in a EQ, and just see where my snares are sitting. Way too low. Probably pitch up this lower one. Oh, Jesus Christ almighty. So what I might do as well for this upper layer, because it is a clap, I might give it a bit of width. Uh, I, I have a send down here, which is my doubler. Uh, basically, it's just a... Uh, <laughs> I know, think of it like a, a, um, a stereo widener that's got a slight variation in pitch. So rather than delaying a signal, actually I think it is a delaying it a little bit. Kind of like the Haas effect, but with a bit more going on. And uh, you know, this is designed to have like be placed onto an insert, but basically I've just taken the direct sound and pulled it all the way down to basically nothing. Um, put that in the middle. But I've just given it a little bit of lift have a bit of presence and then um basically just the uh the sound's been delayed at a 45 degree angle so it's not out of phase uh i wouldn't put this on bass obviously you don't want that to be split and pitched because then it's going to be re really noticeable but on claps and stuff like that i think you can get away with it a little bit so what's this i one two five seven eight nine oh so that one Just a little bit of width. Cool. Now let's move let's move on to something a bit more interesting. Let's uh let's make some make some bases. Uh we'll start off with serum, because I know how to use that pretty well. And then we can like try and move off to some more uh some more interesting stuff. Oh, this is Room effects, I don't want that. Go away. Alright. Um make the skin default. And then Right, let's listen to some of these bases actually I didn't really give them a proper lesson. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm hearing is um, 
Yeah, except for the submarine tune, that one's actually pretty mad, that bass. But the, the other two, there's a lot of like static basses going on in terms of the sub anyways. Uh, there's not a whole lot of movement. So maybe let's try and go for something like that, deep and minimal. Not a lot of movement. We can go like crazy with the mid basses, but like the driving force of the track, I don't really want there to be too much um deviation because it's a genre that i'm not playing about too much with i don't want to go too experimental with it all i've got my push down here as well um this is deep and dark and all that good stuff i'm going to write an e i think He's a nice moody one. All right. I notice the kicks a lot of these as well, like leave a bit of a space in the tracks. Go with these returns real quick. So yeah, something like that. There's a like a little bit of a break. So, oh. Maybe. Cool, we'll start off with that, something nice and simple. Uh, we'll duplicate that, loop that section, and then we can fill in these um, these gaps with uh, more mid-range stuff or samples and things, and we can like pop things in and out and have like a bit of a call and response going on. So, yeah, let's maybe... Mm, do I want this or do I want something a bit more harmonic? And definitely louder. Oh shit. The sound card does not like me today. I'm gonna get rid of that. And that. Cool. Let's put a little pitch envelope on this. Make this pretty small. Envelope two. Those are there. And then around the global master tuning, right up by like 12. So now we've just got that like, that really short like sort of pitch drop and we can make that a bit longer if we want. I like it quite short, it has a little bit more impact, kind of like acts like a second kick, and then, um, you know, we can beef this up. I don't, to be fair, with subs, I don't like to beef them up with, um, you know, with direct inserts. Like, what I like to do is, like, have a separate chain, uh, which is, you know, sort of dealing with, like, the upper frequencies. So... What's a good subsaturator that I can think of that you guys haven't seen me use before? Um, have a dig through the plugins folders. I'm pretty sure there's some cool stuff in this Arturia thing. Oh yeah, let's use the um, pre. I've got like this pre thing. My favorites. Sound design, yeah, pre box. There we go. So, I've made this like rack, which basically is a bunch of different Arturia preamps, um, which are based on old vintage preamps, basically. And, um, you know, I've got the drive options here. Um, and then I've got like, you know, which ones I want to come through. I actually don't think the drives are actually doing anything, I think they just defaulted at full. Um, Yeah, I don't know why that's uh, minimum. Pop, I pop that down. Yeah, there we go. Pop those down and then... That's not doing anything. About zero. 
Wait, what? Yeah, that one's working. That one's not. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, my, my racks are broken, but basically, um, it doesn't really matter because... Oh, no, wait, hang on. Okay, yeah, they are working now. Oh, good. Sweet. So, what was I saying? Yeah, saturation and subs. So, what was it? I want to saturate the low end, but I don't want it to come through again. So we'll pop this EQ on the end. I want the subs to engage the pre's. So I'm letting the subs come through. And if we just solo this group here, we can like sort of listen to the saturated version that we're getting through. So at the minute, there's just a dry signal coming through. But if I run this through a Neve pre, which is like notorious with like, you know, bass and bass drums and kicks and stuff in studios, we can play about with how much of this we want in there. We can actually, um, you know, we've got a few EQs in here as well, which sound quite nice. Uh, so let's maybe pop this low shelf on like one or two twenty. Actually, no, let's use this bell because uh, this one's we can push it up a little bit more. We can get it to like four hundred, or like a little bit lower. So maybe this is a little bit too high on the drive. Maybe what we'll do is grab a utility from here, drop it down. Now, if we blend that in with the original, take it away, and then put it back. Yeah, it just adds like that little bit of grit on the top end. And then, um, how's it going, Harvey? You're right. Um, yeah, basically just um, you know add adding that little bit of extra presence on that top on on the uh, the upper end of the subs. So, Cool. Now let's throw something in over the top of, um, well, not over the top of it, but like to sort of counteract that, the call and response. So if I pull this in and make these, and minimize all this shit. Yeah, as well. right, let's, uh, Okay. Maybe try something like that, and then let's try FMing this thing. Now we can take that away, start from scratch. Maybe turn that off as well. Go into my animated ones. Maybe get a bit of movement in that one. On Maybe give it a bit more length on it. Maybe a longer modulation on that FM. 
uh, trigger that to and and then maybe let's pop that on there. Yeah, something like that. And give it some boost back home. We pop that on the next. Maybe on the drive as well. Um, what I might do as well is have a separate sub underneath that, um, doing the movements. <clears throat> if I turn these off, put that sub on, direct out. Uh, why is that sounding really shit? Um. Uh, let's make another one of those, a little pitch thing going on, oh, where's that, an eighth note, <clears throat> let's put LFO3 on envelope mode, and then put that to the global master chain, and then Try that. If it... That's envelope three. Envelope three. And what the pitch is doing is just giving it a little bit more emphasis on those um, on those low notes. That and then obviously take out the low end in that one. And that way we've got like a bit more a bit more emphasis on that sound. Um and now what this means is as well we can just go a bit crazy with the FM on this and uh, Let's try a banjo. Yeah, then maybe we can EQ out these but top bits. Maybe we can uh, modulate that with this. We got a bit of like a, you know, closing sort of sound. Maybe we can do it with the top one as well, just a little bit. Um, cool. And now I want to make a sand the bass reverbs because I've noticed in a lot of these tracks the drums are real dry, and then the basses, the mid basses at least, have got loads of um, loads of wet wetness to it. So let's um, yeah, well, let's use the Arturia plates. Uh, rev plate. This one. I'm liking it a lot more for mid bass sounds recently. Put that 100% wet because it's on a send. Bring in the width a bit. This bass is. Uh, we'll play about the drive feature on it. And. 
such a model favor play each model has the same behavior and sound okay. given the lesson yeah I like that one a little bit less reverb time all right actually I've just realized something that's really annoying uh with this is that there is no um exact times um on this on this reverb that's you know, for d and b it's quite important to have everything in time and I haven't got the most you know um I haven't got the best ear for this, this sort of thing but I mean it's sounding right I'm not gonna yeah wait I mean if I zoom in and uh Highlight a eighth note. I can see down there that the duration is 174 milliseconds in Ableton. So, like down in this little bottom box, it'll be really small for you guys to see. But if you select a time thing and then highlight that segment, it'll tell you down there in the, in the little in little brackets duration zero 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 and then like eight seven. So that's eight seven milliseconds. That's 174. So if I I put this on 87. This should be perfectly in time with, with an eighth note or a sixteenth note of my project. And it should give like the right amount of separation for your reverbs. So pro tip right there. Um, you know, it just makes um you know having the pre delays set to beat seg segments of your projects it really helps you um you know, have helps your reverbs like set back correctly and without them sounding like you're just pissing about with uh with the pre delay times and stuff like that. So So we can like take that sound, do the same thing, copy it over, but then just change the mid bass patch. I'm gonna change the colour of that one just so that I know it's a stub as well. Oh shit, no good. So we'll delete that one, put that one there, and then just change, change this one, I guess. Um, change that to, change this one to base extract, whatever that one is. Maybe move about these filters a little bit. Hmm. Might try and uh, <clears throat> modulate this with this. So I think, well, I, I haven't played about this too much, but Serum's got this new feature where you can modulate, modulate LFO times, or like uh, the, the position, the point positions. Give this a go, it could sound awful, but we'll give it a go. Uh, maybe... Have some like filter movement going on here as well. Um, you know what? Not do it with an EQ, let's do it with Filter Freak. Filter Freak. 
you guys haven't got the uh, the sound source stuff, I really recommend it. It's just mental. Yeah, let's play about with that. Zoom in. Create a random shape. Jesus, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Holy shit, my ears. Let's um make this a bit of a neuro thingy or a bit more neuroy. Uh, let's. What am I doing? Uh. I want some more filter freaks doing the band pass shit. But with different shapes. I kind of want a bit of a deeper sound if I'm going to do this. So maybe let's remove all destinations. Uh, delete. How do I delete that? Deleting that. 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 Uh. What do I do that? There's gotta be a way to delete. Don't do the dirty dude. All right, fuck it. We have to move all destinations. Uh, fuck you. Let's get start from start from scratch. Start from scratch again and just drag some go with some massive tables, massive X wave tables, got some good shit in here. Go with um additive FM laser biz. Sounds interesting. <laughs> Something like, that. something like that. And then I'm gonna duplicate this again. Uh, I'm gonna get the filters and move those around. Get some get some filter movement going on. Maybe put, add some more little wobbles. Cool, now we've got something going on and we've almost removed the sound with filters, then we can use the glue. Uh, this is basically the glue compressor from Ableton, but 
the one from Cytomic, which are the guys that helped mm -hmm. make it. And then we're going to take the exact same little chain that we had before, copy it over and move around some of the points, some more movement going. Let's uh, a bit. and uh, I'm going to take that pro cue and just slap it on the end because I think all that's doing is just moving. Yeah. Uh, let's open up this one and have a look at this frequency. And then one more, one more little movement. Cool. And now we'll throw another one of those glues on the end. You can hear like those artifacts coming out now as well when I'm like because I'm compressing it so much. Blur that a little bit. Cool. Oh, I think that sounds good. Uh, I forgot I need to change that now. Uh. Oh, I need to... Alex, I need to change both of those. Change this one back. Do something about that sweepy. Oh, wait, I'm gonna know what that is. I know what that is the phase. The phase of you. I can't really get the definition I had before in the base. So I'm gonna... Bring out some of those notes. Maybe put some black box on that. Give it a bit of grit as well. More grit. <clears throat> Maybe <clears throat> we need 
to get a volume on that one, the volume rack, and just automate out some of that. Yuck. Maybe. Uh, what this volume rack is, if you guys don't know as well, is just um, it's basically a utility that I've just mapped to be able to draw automation in. So rather than like uh, using like a transient shape or whatever, I can just manually draw stuff. It saves me, um, it gives me a little bit of extra control over everything in the track, which is useful. Ow. Uh. Also, I want to automate in some reverb on that kick. Go with this plate here. Yeah, go with this plate. And then we'll make this really short. And then we'll do the same thing with the pre delay on this one, which I think was 87. Uh, that volume, yeah, definitely, man. The volume volume rack thing is really useful. Um, yeah, if, if you want ultimate control, anyways, like a lot of plugins that try and like do it all for you automatically, like they just don't have, you know, the dedicated need. You know, like the um, the dedicated people. What the fuck am I chatting about? The um, you know, the control that you need for your your know, individual sections in tracks like a lot of plugins will try and be pop you know general problem solvers but sometimes you need a very specific problem solving and you know having total control allows you to do that a little bit quicker uh... the gate on there kill it off pretty quick just to give it some space but then to knock it back I actually really don't like this plate. Let's go with a convo convolution. Because I want a, a real space for this kick drum. Not a plate. Uh, real spaces. Oh my god. Um farewell. Yeah, let's try you. That's better. Uh God, fuck off. I only want it coming in at first pick. Try that. Sounds a bit 
bit snotty this kit, uh, this base. I mean, it didn't really end up going the way that I wanted it to. Maybe. Control D for life. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, we got some width on these. So maybe throw these bases doubler. Uh, check our our image on that one. Maybe not. Fucking stereo. Now we're doing good. Cool. So let's take these bases now and slightly change them so that they're not the same every time. Because I think this sort of DMB is all about. Uh, slightly nuanced changes over time rather than having like a crazy arrangement or like notations and stuff like that it's uh you know for me anyways that's the, that's the way it seems so let's go into this one and but not too much i think that's the key don't fuck with it too much You know what I like to do to be fair is use the ASIM minus. That should be. And then just maybe a little bit of distortion to get that grip back. You'll find you'll find me reaching a, a, a yeah words. You'll find me reaching a lot for this plugin. It is so good. It's so good just for getting that little bit of grit back into the track. Uh, and let's maybe pull this. Get that nasty shit out of there. Maybe I pulled a little bit too much out there, but... Maybe with this volume thing we should do a little bit of that. Cool. Now we've got like a basic, a basic thing. Uh, let's add. That's some weird shit. Um, how do we get some weird shit going? Uh, weird shit, weird shit, weird shit. Uh, operator maybe. Operator can do weird shit. I haven't even done any side chaining or anything yet as well with these bases. I need to do that before I forget. Um, want some mid, mid shit. Go for you down here. Extra base. 
command S because if I don't save I'll do what I did last time and the whole project will crash and I won't have anything to call back on. <laughs> um right. Let's um jump into yeah, operator. Because basically what like what I'm thinking is just use some crazy FM shit, throw it through corpus. Maybe a bit of some of the weird stuff. I keep saying weird shit and weird stuff, and anything to like granulize and met like get things metallic sounding. Um, add a, like in the background of this will be nice. Uh, let's go for a low. Oh, let's just leave that running, and we'll play about. This. Cool, so there's our FM and then let's play about with different values and different Maybe let's draw in some harmonics on this this last one. That'll start us off. Uh, e. Rang an E, right? We got this weird got manipulator. 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 Manny. Is it a minip? I'm so dyslexic. Uh, minip. No. I don't know. I don't think I've got this plugin anymore, to be fair. Um, let's try. Portal. This can go either way. Seriously, portal's fucked. Uh... And then ba basically what I want to do with this now that I've got it all you know, strange. Um, Lee Robinson frequency shifter. So Portal's got a frequency shifter in it, uh, which is why I reach for it. Like I would go for like some of the, you know, nat native stuff. But like, if I want something that's really going to like stand out and be different from what people are showing you on YouTube and stuff like that, I, I think I should use uh, instruments and effects which are going to, you know, uh, lend lend you the ability to have the uh the unique sounds you know i think if everyone shows you how to use frequency shifter in a certain way then everyone's going to use frequency shifter in a certain way you know um that's, that's just my take on it but yeah you've got these um change like the scales of these as well which is pretty sick and then free tuning <laughs> i don't think it gets weirder than that um <laughs> but let's uh let's keep it the scales uh cool so I've got the very long verb. I like the very long verb because it's very, very, very long. <laughs> and um, let's get the volume box back on there, the volume rack. And we'll pop this onto 
the verb. And yeah, if I let this run indefinitely, um, like the reverb will ring on forever. I've got it set to like it's just it's fully maxed out, basically frozen. Uh, the decay is maxed out as well. There's you know it's just a super 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 wet reverb. Um, and by sending this 100% to there, I can lower this channel entirely, and then automate the long verb on you know specific things that I send to it here. And I can bring things in and out with it. Actually, no, I think I need that on full. Do I need that on full? I shouldn't need that on full. I'm going to lower that down and see what happens. No? Okay, maybe I do. No, it's solo. Okay, yeah, you can see it there. So, if I... Oh... I don't know what to do with this. Maybe let's lower it down to like minus 12 and then play that with it from there. And then I can use these bass patterns and like sort of guide where I want to draw these in. So we've got like a little gap here. Maybe after the kick, we can like automate in something there. Hmm. There we go. So if I mute the channel, then I can like use it to like send art artificial blips into it. Um, let's give that a go. And then maybe. And then we can like automate some stuff within this, get different sounds out of it. So let's say here, wrap that up. Maybe automate you as well. Try this, see how that sounds. Maybe play that with that. Probably done anything. Um, I think it's just because it's reverbing for so long. Maybe let's bring down the a little bit. Okay. That seems to have done something. Um, try that and then pop you up to a, s a nine. Maybe? Give that a go. And we're not getting any sound. That's great. Uh, why are we not getting any sound? Maybe that's uh, I can do a bit of a boost. Might 
do is can I about can I insert the effect and then bounce out the reverb and put reverb. Oh yeah, sick. I haven't actually tried this before, but we'll give it a go. Fuck you. Long reverb, bitch. Uh, uh. Cool. Now we have the reverb send thing. Um, and delete whatever the fuck that was. And now we can use the re the long reverb. Delete this automation as well. We can use the long reverb for the actual basses now, and then get the sound from that. So I don't know why it decayed so much. I might have to. Um, Highlight in each individual bit and compress them to get it back up to the the right levels. Is a bitch, but hey, who said music was easy? I probably could have just done this right the first time round, but. I don't even compress, I can just play dodge this with my eyes. Just run it through an LA2A to just catch any peaks. CLA2A. Uh, peak reduction 60, gain of 50. <laughs> I mean, it didn't do what I wanted it to do, but it kind of did. So I'm going to leave it and send it off to that a little bit. Cool. Now let's play about with. Oh shit. Uh. I'm going to put you in the effects box as well, because you are an effect. Bosh. Sick. Now, now we can play with... Uh, what can I play with? Mm. Shit. See, what I want to do is make a... Um, is make a reverb lead into this bass. But then, you know, the only, I could do the same thing again, but that's long. Uh, hmm. Spring real quick. Uh, Spring, where are you? Hmm. Pre delay eighty seven. Was eighty seven? I think it was eighty seven. Yeah, eighty seven. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. You know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to detune every other one ever so slightly up and down. That way, every bar, every couple bars that passes over, it's slightly different. Um, again, just trying to like 
keep things moving and breathing and uh, you know not sounding too repetitive what i really should do is do something about these hats um they are boring i mean they do get a bit more interesting later on with some percussion but ah side chain side chain side chain getting about the side chain uh kick that's the kick that's the kick Group nine is the snares. Group nine. Group nine. Group nine. Um. Set that to side And that one's a side that percussion is so low. Such bass in that shit. Damn these sins. That. And then this one also needs some fucking cleaning up. Maybe ease off the gas for a little bit. Anyway, you can use that clay clip on these, get them up in volume a little bit. I was just doing that was boosting um around 8k on the uh on that like on the off snare so like every second snare i've got this uh thing with the spring reverb um this one i was just brighten up a little bit so it's like that and yes giving it a bit of play about with some of the pitching on some of these little like reverb sweeps thingies. Um change that to complex. <laughs> position and offness. Cool. Uh, I like 
like that and duplicate these again maybe change the odd one uh, i mean like every other one oh my god boom right now i don't want to put an auto pan on all of these as well give it some space sort of like move it around a little bit uh let's Let's, let's keep it like that actually. And then give it half or a, a, a bar. <laughs> sound card and fucking hates me um right well, what the fuck was i doing um i want to oh what do i want to do? do oh yeah freak show yeah maybe some fucking i don't know dumpster fire the one I'm thinking of. Yeah. Yeah, uh, by the way, if any of you... Oh, hey, what's on trend? How's it going, mate? Um, yeah. If if you guys don't know what this plugin is doing, neither do I. <laughs> like it just has some knobs, and it it moves. It's got an octopus on it. That's all you need to know. <laughs> That's all you need to know. It's that that weird shit I was on about earlier. That 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 is this is weird shit. <laughs> And what I'm going to do is side chain this to the base compressor. So anything that comes out of the subgroup, basically this is going to like squash and shut it up because it's going to get out of hand with those other weird plugins. Um, let's take anything that comes out of the base. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, man, you really do. Um, I don't use them enough, really. Like the um, the freak show stuff is mad, and I really, really, really don't use it enough. Because uh, you know, p particularly for adding, like you know, cr creating depth and weirdness and like un unpredictability to the sounds. And if you want to keep things moving in a track and like have things change over time, like the freak show stuff is ideal for that stuff. <laughs> Not that one. 
Sounds like it's changing. Close. Yeah, that'll be why. <laughs>
maybe let's uh, ease, ease these hats a little bit. But, uh, uh, definitely need that volume. Volume, I oh, know, what is it? utility. Utility. Put you on there. Give you a little boost in volume to accentuate that bit. <laughs> Maybe have like that little bit of percussion there as well. Uh, uh and you this is so small. <laughs> I feel like we need to make like a wider, a wider um, thingy, parallel thingy. Go with another return track. Bass. Girth. Bass girth. Um. We're gonna put on the bass girth track. Maybe choral. Uh, definitely a EQ. Oh. Fuck. Oh. Pro Q. Needs to leave the space because what? Pro. Uh, all results. Q. Plugins. Little P. What the fuck? Where's my fab filter stuff? Right, Ableton sucks. <laughs> um. Yeah, we want to basically take out anything. Anything below like 150, really, when we're coming to widening and shit. Um, you can go a bit lower, I wouldn't recommend it. You know, like in an ideal world, around 200, but there's some stuff that does creep under 200, which you kind of want to keep wide. Um, let's play about with just sending the entire, uh, the entire group to it real quick, and then we can choose which sounds we want to send through. <laughs> Cool. So now definitely want to boost the sides here. Um, yeah, because that, that's basically what this rack's for. So we're going to just accentuate those highs in the middle. Down a little bit. And then. On this, what else can we add? Uh, I don't want to add a delay because I don't want to add anything that's like time based too much. What we've got modulators, we've got chorus, we've got flanges, and we've got phases. Phases, a phaser could be called phases. Phases. Oh, actually, the convolve thing in, in trash is good as well. We can use that. Yeah, convolve. Ah, oh, wait, trash. Trash two. Then we can just use this for the uh, convolver rather than the trash, and then we can just throw it in some. Oh, right. You can hear like just how wide that is. It's probably way too wide. 
think, thinking about it now. How, how out of phase is that? That's so out of phase. <laughs> but, um, in all honesty, because it's on a send, it doesn't really matter. You know, as long as the body of it is all there, like when, when it, you play it out in a sound system, it's actually not going to be, um, you know, you're not going to hear this width. So if it's out of phase, it doesn't really matter. Um, unless if it's really fucking, when it gets put to mono. And in all honesty, it's not. It's a bit too wide. Yeah. I mean, is it a bit too wide? Absolutely. Um, let's get an S1 in there and dial it back in. Uh, imager. The Waves S1 imager is ideal for taming these um, ultra wide girth racks. <laughs> So yeah, basically, you know, what this rack is, is just throwing shit as far to the sides as humanly possible and then just like, you know, controlling that. That's, that's a lot, actually, that, that is a very good way of describing my production process. Push it to the limit and then dial it back. So yeah, it's uh, definitely a way to like, you know, stop, like not keep yourself from being too, um, what's the word? It allows you to still be creative and like, you know, not worry about things because you can just really send shit west and then be like, right, let's, you know, okay, we've, we've gone too far there. Let's dial that back. And then, you know, you can use your scientific side and your creative side to help each other out rather than going in super analytical and being like, oh, I need to worry about this and I need to worry about that. You know, worry about that later on. Um, and like, allow yourself to get weird. Um, right. So I don't want the entire fucking bass group on that, fucked, but the odd sounds can create some cool contrast. I make a end for this. Yeah, I did. Um, maybe you can add a little bit of width to this. You do that with the imager. There we go. <laughs> Does that sound wider? That sounds... Really, um... Let's try... Uh... Fuck it, let's just try another coral. Just... Well, after? Yeah, after. In that mix. Let me put that image on the end. Give it that full work. Bring that in. Yeah. 
then copy those two, put them on that one, put it there. Cool. So I guess all this That wasn't meant to happen with that like little like thing, but I liked it, <laughs> so I'm gonna leave it in. Um, we need some more bass like weirdness. We need some more mid range shit. Um, I can't be fucked making another one, so I'm gonna have a look at my mud pies. Mud pies. Yeah, yeah some of, some of this shit. Uh, let's cut you out, and then we'll just fill in spaces with you. Um, gap between these ones, so we can throw something in there. Let's have a look. Um, pro tip, if you want to duplicate, if you want to like scan through a big thing of audio, duplicate it and hit zero to deactivate the clip and then you can drag this all the way to the end of your clip sorry my push is in the way and i have like no space on my desk now if i zoom back in I've dragged that little indicator to all the way to the right. If I zoom in here and make this nice and big, um, I can like scan through thing of audio with just the arrow, and so I can just really quickly decide um, what I want to fit into that little <coughs> gap there. <laughs> So I definitely want this going to the thing almost 100% and the doubler, which one's the doubler? Maybe add a little, little swoosh. Yeah, that's what we want. More of that. Mmm. Uh, if you're wondering what this like mud pie thing is as well, these are like a combination of bases that I've made um previously. I know they sound nuts because of like the width and stuff on them, but like you know, if I take them off, they aren't actually all that impressive. Like, let me just do this uh, thing again. Yeah, you know, I'm just gonna that there. What's the day today? Thursday, and people are raging on the street. There are perks to living on Stokes, but there really aren't many. <laughs> um, pop those back up. Wait. I'm just going to turn this down for the sake of my ears and yours. Maybe 
let's warp this. Remove that back a little bit so we can get these. Bring it Um, let's keep this first bit free of the sounds and then have them come in for these bits and then really should separate them for everyone that I do. So let's delete those, delete those, those, delete that and then Bosch, no, Bosch. Uh, that's not in time. Oh, and then I don't want to change every other one, though, aren't I? Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Maybe we could go into this one. Yeah, this. Maybe by change warping it and then changing it to complex. That's how. Yeah. Yeah. Sick. All right. Nice one. So let's copy that there. Oh shit. Uh can C can V. I like that. Can D, can D, cool. And then I don't want that one to be different as well. Wait. You, 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 you know what, you are gonna be different. Let's walk you into the Pro. This one as well, we're gonna change these these ones around. Duplicate you delete delete delete. Yeah. And then right. Let's no, okay. Change you as well. I think 
You need to be loud. <laughs> This bit, I kind of want to add some emphasis on that bass, just a little bit, just a smidge. Um, probably do it with the EQ to be fair, just give it like a eh. holy shit. What the fuck happened there? Jesus. What the fuck? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I need to fucking tweet Steve Duda about that. Analog BD sign wave table freaking the fuck out. Jesus. Uh, maybe not with an EQ, but with maybe a little bit of FM. Is that cheeky? Not too cheeky. Um. Is it? Nah, fuck it. Fine. Um, we're gonna use that one. Max that out, and then we're gonna. What we're we gonna use? We use a band pass. Band twenty four. Checked out. Oh my god. Boom. Oh, now, sorry for the air rape in this stream, by the way. If you have received bleeding eardrums, uh, do not. Please don't sue me. I'm I'm very broke at the minute. <laughs> uh, face it. And you. What have we got in here? Surely there's um thin thick. Ah, oh Jesus, that looks awful. Not listening. Uh bipole harmonic? No. Uh Basic and harmonic, yeah, yeah, that'll do. Cool. You down. And then we could also make that a bit fine.
maybe give this a bit of a wobble. Yeah, like a bit more resonant. Yeah, much. this with the wrong ones as well to be fair maybe i should have done that that way around and then put that there like that <laughs> I don't know, I'm conflicted. Um, oh, new Tinder mic. Uh, okay. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Um, sorry, yeah, just listen, reading your stuff, uh, mod, modu, modu, uh, really love to watch this tomorrow, yeah, this will be saved to the channel, man, um, this will be all uploaded, I've been going for about two and a half hours now, roughly, I think, uh, so yeah, this will be up on the channel for everyone to watch later on, came from pub to smash, yeah, nah, fair enough, man, uh, I wish I'd, um, Wish I had the funds to go out right now. Um... guys haven't got shaper box get it it's fucking sick um i had to beg the guys i i you know what i i <laughs> had a bit of an argument with the guys to be fair over at over at cable guys for this um because i hit him up and i was just like because i'm a student at dbs i was like hey can i get a student discount and they were like yeah bro here's the plugin and i went to download it and it was like fucked for some reason and um yeah, so what was it like for some reason it was like wasn't working, and I literally emailed them being like, "Listen, you don't give me give me a you know I paid for this plugin, you don't give it me, I'll crack it." <laughs> they got back to me the next day and was like, "Yeah, no, no, here's the plugin, it's all good." And I was just like, "Yeah, fucking you know when you pay for a plugin and you can't use it, it's really frustrating." <laughs> Oh, 
The reason I'd reach for this as well over Duck is just because it's a little bit more, um, you, know, like, you know, obviously this is doing like side chaining, volume shaping and all, all that. You can do a lot more with it than just that, but a little bit more precise than Duck, but Duck's really quick to use. Whereas this is a bit of a headache. Can, can be a bit of a headache, not as it can be. But what's cool is, um, you know, I can throw this in basically that use it like an auto pan and a volume shaper. So maybe shorten that apart. Blend that in a little bit. Q1A. Got a nice boost on the top end. I'm just gonna like give it some air. And 5k. Alright, what's going on there? Why's the intro bit there? Now I'm going to do, I'm going to put some black box on that, let's bring that out, black box, black cube, dry chain. That's the dry chain right there. I don't like how that's really going from my left ear to the right. Why is it doing? Is that the serum? Give it a bit more of the...
Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm liking where this is going. Where where does Sesco take his shit? I, I like Sesco's arrangement because like it's it's very 140, you know. Um, it's it's familiar. You can see that we've written in a very um in a very similar way. Um, in terms of structure, because I'm not used to you know Bredrin's way of doing it or Submarine's way of doing things where it's like you know six minute tracks. I mean, yeah could do that. I just think it'd be a bit samey and a bit of a bitch to mix going over that long because you have to keep it interesting. Um, whereas he's just done like the sort of uh, four, four I mean the three lots of 16 breakdown or like you know post drop, build, drop, 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 breakdown, outro sort of situation and I rate that. Um you need to keep things interesting, because like, I admit it, this is just a bit of like a copy-paste jobby. Um, you know, get a bit of structure in there, we could just duplicate that, take out, take out the precaution here, uh, maybe... I don't know, maybe for the, these bits, group those. Uh, EQ. Let me just go with the channel EQ. This one and just go past. Turn it on and off, obviously. Uh, and then go band down. <laughs> Removes the sub from the bases and then, uh, well, it's, I mean, actually, now because you don't want any bases in this bit, do you really? Maybe just like, uh, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing in the life. Um, uh, Maybe like bring a pad in this. this different vocals and stuff come in. Um, vocal effects. <laughs> you know what, let's get a new tingling in here. Let's 
get some auto tune, real tune, stereo. This is this is me just being really lazy and not tuning my vocals, <laughs> my vocal samples. Oh, cool facts. Me half a run upon a set and. Could use those little, those little blips. Uh, but cut you out, bring you over. And then, wash. Yeah, a little effect going in here. <laughs> And then maybe pitch it down so it's like dark and Different little blip. as well as a H delay. Uh, 
Vila Vocals uh, No, 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 no um, Vox Maybe Really annoying. With Leia. V. Bell. SD card. My sample. Sample. Yeah, it is Vila. Um, that one, E2, go for F and then we'll pitch it up, coming down, and then we can delete every odd one here, sort of change it up, wait, no no no, E, Yeah, D sharp. Go for that one. Delete every odd one and keep the key things changing. <laughs>
to throw a quick seed on this as well. Be able to tell until I listen to it on like my monitors properly because uh, you know my housemates are asleep and stuff at the minute. But um, so far, I'm thinking it's sounding all right. There's obviously a lot of crazy, <laughs> crazy stuff getting introduced by that rack um, that we can tidy up and stuff. But yeah, I will continue this. It's just I don't really know what to do with this section down here, and then breakdown and second drop will be pretty easy. It's just uh, tying all the bits together and then fucking oh they're mixing all this all the reverbs and shit and blending reverbs and oh like mix downs are getting so difficult for me now <laughs> you know, they're just because i know what i need to do to get it to sound up there you know with like the pros you know it's it's, uh, it's a real headache um <clears throat> but you know the mixing stream will be you know will be there when I um when I finish this tune off. I think we've got a decent amount done, you know. Starting with the drums before stream is a good, definitely a good idea. There's definitely some tightening up that needs to be done. But it's sounding okay, I think. Um Yeah. How's everyone doing? You guys all good? Still there? <laughs> um seeing if you guys are in the chat or not. I'm going for two hours and forty minutes. Nice one, man. No, I'm glad. I'm glad you guys. Um... Yeah, glad you guys liked it. Um, yeah, I will do some more, more stuff. Like the reason I'm not uploading so much at the minute is purely because. I'm trying to produce as much as I uh, as I can so that 
I'm learning new stuff to bring to you guys for the streams and like, you know, if I do do a video in the future to, um, well, no, I will be doing videos in the future, but it's just when I do a video, um, I want it to be super high quality content that like no one else is really covering in as much detail as. Um, if you're dreading the mix down, I'm working out, I'm working out either parts, completely switch up the second. Yeah, no, I might do, man. Need to. I think when it, <laughs> what I've learned from the stream is that you need to come at DMB really wired on coffee or something, <laughs> and just you know be um be almost ADHD with it, and just keep, constantly keep moving to keep yourself like feeling like you're doing something because it's uh, such minimal changes and like you know little nuances. Um, that you're looking at, it's uh, it's one of those things that you kind of need to have like your full ADHD brain on for, um, and it definitely helps having these like little pre-made base loop things and just compiling your bases. That you know really helps with the workflow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Find your own little tricks to uh, keep it interesting. Um, all right, on that note, guys, I'm gonna head off and um, drink some water because I'm literally about to pass out in this room, it's so hot. Um, but yeah, just was it just here or just there? 50% off masters for the rest of the week, um, you know, for the next seven days. If you want to get in touch, my email's up there as well. Uh, that's all lowercase, by the way, um, just so you guys know. And um, yeah, get some masters done. Uh, that's five pound per per stereo master. You get unlimited revisions. Uh, I'm also doing mix downs now. Um, it's not officially announced yet, but um, because you know I haven't really had um, too much experience mixing down other people's tracks, but I'm getting there with some of my mates. But if you want to get an early bird call on on a mix down, get in touch with me on that email, and then we can sort something out at a very reasonable price um yeah all right in a bit guys have a good one peace